Good evening, folks, and welcome to tonight's Master Plan Update Steering Committee on the 6th of September, day after Labor Day. Now, could you leave this Pledge of Allegiance? Sure. Please? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, tonight we're going to talk about a couple events that are happening in town uh, over the next few days. Uh, roll out of the existing conditions. RKG is going to help us there, along with uh, more on the charrette discussion and goals. And again, RKG is going to help us there. And then finally, uh, we'll do some um, budget process, mass plan invitation. Now, we don't have the minutes on here, but we'll go ahead and um, vote on the minutes at the end, too, if we have them. And everybody's had the opportunity to read them. So, pretty good. Okay, um, two advertisements, if we may. First off, uh, this Saturday, Congregational Church has an open house 2 to 4 p.m. And then uh, Big Fair in uh, Fay Park, the country fair from the uh, Unitarian Church, and that's from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, please come on out there, folks, uh, see all the things that will be going on. It's, it's a great opportunity to meet people and uh, see you know, some of the things going on in town. And the fair is always a fun time. And your Master Plan Update Steering Committee will even have a booth out there. Stop by and see us too, please. Um, the evening before... Littleton High School football game. Mike, is that the first game of the season? Kickoff of the season. Kickoff yep. of the season on September 9th at Alumni Field. The game time is 7 p.m. Now, there's a special treat at halftime, so you're going to want to flood the stands and be ready because we have 01460, back your master plan update, T-shirts, and the high school cheerleader is going to toss them out into the uh, audience there, the crowd. Um, there's, there's a limited supply, so be there and be early, and don't be getting a concession while the T-shirts are being thrown out. All right, so that's this Friday on September 9th. And we've had two very, very successful years here recently, too. Yes. What's the forecast this uh, year? Actually, they've had four successful years running, really good years. This year's a transition year, new guys stepping up uh, to take over for some of the guys that graduated, but I, st I still think it look, looks very positive. Super. Thank you. All right, uh, now on to the uh, business of the committee itself here. So the rollout of the existing conditions chapters. Um, Judy, you want to take us through what you think in there, please? Yeah, we're, um, we're about two weeks behind. Uh, I hope to get roll these out a couple of weeks ago. Um, the office move in August was a lot more traumatic for us than I think anybody ever expected. And it just set this and everything else back. It uh -huh. was, I'm trying to just be as put together about this presentation as I possibly can. It was more difficult than I think any of us expected. Okay. So I'm thinking probably about two to three more weeks, and we'll have them ready for you. Okay. So somewhere around the 21st or so? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, when we say the rollout of them, how are you going to present that to us, please? Well, we're going to send you a document um, that's going to be called ex you know, Existing Conditions uh, Inventory and uh, Preliminary Issues or something like that. And it will have really what amounts to the beginning section of each element of the plan. So, you know, ultimately the plan co is comprised of several elements, housing, land use, community facilities, and so forth. And they have a structure, and the structure is typically, um, you know, almost an executive summary at the beginning of each one, which is sort of key findings, how does this relate to sustainability or whatever. And then there's existing conditions, issues and opportunities, and recommendations. That's the classic structure of a master plan element. Well, this deliverable that you're getting is the first big chunk of that. It's um, it's existing conditions and inventory and our first take at the sort of issues and opportunities section just to so you guys can tell us have we read your town correctly uh, you know or, or not um, but to give you a chance to respond to something. So it's going to come as a document you're going to want to read that carefully and imagining that what we will do at the October meeting with you, because we have one meeting a month here, I think the October meeting is probably going to be spent really kind of talking about that. And we would come to that meeting, because you guys will have read it, but not everybody in town will have read it, um, probably prepared to do kind of a presentation for you for the benefit of the community mm -hmm. as to what the kind of high points are in that document. So I'm kind of thinking October is a big discussion meeting for that, if that's all right with you. That makes sense. Um, and that'll be right between, I forget when our meeting is in October. I've got it on my calendar here. But, um, you know, it's going to dovetail with the charrettes, yeah, That's too. what, 14th, 15th? Do I remember that right? The 14th and 15th are the, the second 25th charrettes. is our meeting. Okay, that's good. So 
we will have had the two charrettes by then, yeah. and you will have had a good three to possibly four weeks to read that existing conditions document. And you're going to want that because it's not 10 pages. It's probably more like 60. It's a big document. Both sides? <laughs> Double spaced. I would give it to, to you. Um, I would give it to you double sided, just for the interest of not Nuts. cutting down trees. But I mean, it's you know, it's a big document. Is my point. It's really, it's really the kind of where are you? Mm -hmm. How did you get here? And you know, and what issues are you facing from a community planning point of view? So it's a big chunk of the plan. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that noise. They were is. cheering. <laughs> they were cheering. Yeah, they, they like what you're saying. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> so that's what it is. I think really we're going to need the meeting in October. But I think, you know, beyond that, I think you folks are probably going to want to get input from your community experts on these topics. Like we had the um, the core assessment. Thank you. I'm not losing my vocabulary. We had the core assessment meetings with various groups for each element of the plan. And what I would suggest is something. Your decision, of course, is that they be asked to review the sections that they are interested in, that they were asked to be sort of consultants to the consultants for, because they'll be able to give you really, I think, rich input on did we call it right, did we miss something important, if there are corrections that need to be made. I think the local experts pick up right away, you know, and the most embarrassing kind of corrections are when you call a road a street or a street a road. But and those kind of things we want to know, but really what you want to know is, did, was there something very significant that you missed, you know, as well. So inviting them to help, I think, keeps them actively involved in the process, m really maximizes the possibility that you're going to get good input on those sections and what's good or bad about them. Um, so I, I don't know whether you want to wait to do that until you've had a chance to discuss them with us in October or send them out to everybody right away. But my suggest, I'm never afraid to just give people documents and say, this hasn't been discussed by the committee yet, but this is a submission from the consultants. You know, read it, come to the meeting on the 21st, if that's the date that we're meeting, and let people have at it. It's totally up to you. No, and if you guys have concurrence, because I actually already wrote down, sent to the various stakeholders and asked for input. So I'm thinking as soon as it's delivered to us, send it to all the committees and uh, commissions and boards and whatever else we have. Yeah, let everybody and have at it. Give us your input on this. Yeah. And, you know, certainly give us a suspense. And if we want to have it by the 25th, if you get it to us on the 21st of September, give or take, um, to give everybody, and I know for a board to be able to give an official answer to represent the board, they will have had to have a meeting uh, because they'd be uh, stating a position. That's a good point. So we've got to consider that. And the, some of those boards may not have the opportunity to meet. Um, by the time we'd want something back, and I think we'd want something back at least a week before we meet with you all. Does that sound that would like the input from the various boards and commissions? Well, you could. I mean, I don't know how often some of these folks meet, but I would, I would really sort of give them permission to, you know, ideally we'd like to get some input from you before the meeting, but if you can't do that, just come to the meeting. No, I'm okay with that, but okay. you can't bust a suspense unless you have one. That's basic philosophy for me. So, uh, Say that we'll, again? can't bust a suspense unless you have one. So, by asking them to respond by a certain date, because uh, we all respond to suspenses uh, one way or another. Uh, sometimes deliberately ignore it, or sometimes strive to meet it. And things are OBE, you'll get that. And if uh, indeed the board can't get together, just can't, uh, certainly their presence here would be highly desired. So, we do want to invite them for that. Um, but I'd say, you, you know, a week before the meeting, so whatever, 7 from 25 is about the 18th, give or take, we ask for their input. I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. I, I think one thing I would request uh -huh. um, is that people kind of know up front, we don't really like to circulate a Word file for everybody to get their hands yeah, on and start marking fine. up. It is a nightmare. Yeah. It is an absolute yeah. nightmare when everybody decides, oh, well, and it's not just like the little rewriting people want to do, they can't help themselves, right? But when we end up getting back no, no. 10 word files, 15, and all of a sudden you're picking up all the style formats on all these different computers, it just, it's very difficult. So what we typically ask people to do is either to print out a hard copy and make comments on it, or if they have the capacity to mark up a PDF, they can do that. But we just really don't want to encourage people. So I, somehow when I send you the, the draft, I'm going to have a cover letter that, that says, I hope everybody understands, but. Yeah. Well, let's consider this. Uh, in my business, we use something called a CRM, uh, Comment Resolution Matrix. And the columns are, you know, 
who's making the input, the document that's being uh, commented on, the paragraph, what their comment is, and then there's extra comments after that for the uh, writer of the document to respond to those comments. Is that something we'd like to ask people yeah, to do? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then what you're getting is so, you know, obviously it's just one document here. You know, paragraph one, you know, of uh, page two, this chapter, it says this and I suggest this or how about looking at whatever and offering alternatives. So now you have that. Get that in a Word document and then you can use it as you wish. Let's say somebody gave you the perfect rewritten paragraph in there. You say, I'm going to copy and paste. You sure. know, you're calling that. Um, but is, is that something we think can work for us? Does it work for you all? So they would be basically have they would have like a template to work with, and they Correct. would be Precisely. entering their comments. I think that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. And that way you'll get it'll be the, the responses will be standard standardized, yeah. Yeah. and they can be synthesized easier right. instead of trying to pull it all together. You know, that's, that's, boy, handwriting that's exactly on a the way. Piece of paper. Yeah. Good luck. We do it all every day. And same thing. I have no problem with you sending a PDF file rather than a Word document because. Yeah. We, we argue Thank with you. our clients all the time about I could that. hug you all. No way. Really, sometimes no way. people yeah, just want the, the Word file. Yeah. And Thanks for answering yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's a challenge. So if you like what I just described, I'll send it to you in a Word doc. It's a table. And they can just yeah, can populate the cells. Yeah. Okay, good. Would anybody like to Every ask? Every client I've ever worked with has some really great idea that I like. I've never heard of, I've never done, and <coughs> I, you know, I and I steal the idea and I take it on to the next project. And this is going to be one of them. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I'll send you to what I sent to Marin so you can see. And if you think we missed a column, that we should add something. Anybody have any questions of uh, Judy and Eric on this right now? You know, um, anything else on the rollout then? I don't think mm -hmm. so. No, I think that's fine. All right, the charrette discussion then, please. Let's go yes. into it. Yeah. Uh, so Peter Flinker, who's really running the show on these, was had a meeting conflict tonight. So he sent to Judy and I uh, late last week just an outline, a much more detailed outline that I can go over with you all just to kind of describe what's what his plan is for the charrettes or for the charrette on September 30th and October 1st, which would be focused around the Littleton Common area. Mm -hmm. Um, so if that's helpful, I could kind of run through that, and if you have any questions at any point, um, we could discuss. Okay, yeah, please. Okay. So Friday, the day would start, I think, uh, with probably a staff level meeting uh, where the consultant team would come in and meet with staff and just kind of go over everything, any la any last minute logistics. We could do it over lunch and it would just sort of be a working a working meeting. Um, I think I didn't get this confirmation from Peter, but. Probably uh, any of the master plan committee members who are going to be helping out at the charrette uh, might want to attend that too. It might be a good chance for some discussion about facilitation and how things are going to go over those two days. Um, but we can probably roll out those details uh, in the next week or so. But I think he envisioned that starting maybe at 1230. So we'd have about an hour to an hour and a half together to sit down and talk about you know, exactly what's going to happen when and what the roles are going to be. And then at 2.30 p.m. Hold for a set, please. Have we socialized this enough with Keith at this point for the uh, town staff? Um, it wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Because if you want the town, you're talking about town employee staff in this, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see if we can ask Keith that it's the business of that hour for the town staff to be here for it, okay? Okay. So that way... It's people are on the clock, mm -hmm. and they're here, um, and then we, we get the max participation. I believe that way. Now, I don't want it to sound like we're shoving things on people's throat, but as part of their duties that day, uh, I think if it's presented, and Keith knows how to do that. So let's ask Keith, please. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, go ahead, Eric, please. Sure. Uh, so then at 2.30 p.m., the actual public portion of the charrette would begin where we would do the walking tour um, of the whole common area with whoever can make it. So that would be from 2.30, rough start, to about 4.30. So we'd have about two hours. Um, and Peter's plan for that would be we would basically meet um, on the common. We'd gather there. Hopefully there will be plenty of parking for those who come around. If not, they can park and walk and meet us there. Um, his idea was kind of gather around maps and just have a discussion at the very outset with folks who are there about what, you know, sort of where should we walk, what are some of the opportunities, what are some of the challenges, and try to map out a walking route with them so that we can get some input right from the beginning on that. 
And then essentially, depending on how many people are there, um, we would break up. We could either do it in one large group if there's, say, I don't know, maybe 15 or 18 people. If there are 40 people, we'll probably have to break it up and have a couple kind of group, tour group leaders. So I might be one, Peter might be one, Judy might be one, one of you might do it. You know, we can talk about that. Um, and then we would essentially follow that walking group. But mm -hmm. we would try to allow the public to kind of lead the discussion to let us know what some of their concerns are and where the kind of opportunity areas are um, around the common. Uh, and then uh, we would then basically collect that input as we're going through. I imagine we'll be walking around with clipboards or something where we can make notes uh, as we walk around, taking lots of photographs uh, as we go around. And then we would, again, we would break after about two hours at 4.30. Inclement weather plan? Wear uh, raincoats. Yeah, we could, we could do it with raincoats and umbrellas. Okay. Um, or if it's really bad, we may just have to scrap it and then try to maybe figure out how to do it with some kind of indoor option. But I'll check with Peter on that piece. All right, thanks. Uh, so then we break at 4.30, and then the, basically the consultant team and whoever is taking place in the Friday evening or helping out with the Friday evening session would then basically work from 4.30 to 6.30 to prepare for the 6.30 evening session. So we would do all the prep put the PowerPoints together based on what we heard during the walking tour and, and get ready for that. Okay. Uh, then at 6.30, we would have what Peter's calling the listening workshop to kind of talk about issues and opportunities. So obviously this, this may be a little bit repetitive for some of the folks who were able to make the walking tour, but given that that walking tour is happening during the day and we realize that many people are working, we do need an opportunity for folks who are coming in the evening to be able to weigh in on those issues and opportunities. There's also a value, too, in everybody being in the room together. But sometimes yeah. just hearing the conversation makes people think about something that they may not have thought of before. Yeah. So it's, it's valuable to do that piece of it. Yeah. Uh, so there would be a welcome probably from the, the committee and the consultant team. Uh, Peter would then lead kind of an introductory uh, PowerPoint about uh, kind of going over the existing conditions and some of what we heard during the walking tour. And then really the bulk of the meeting would be um, in small group discussions, uh, sim not, not dissimilar to what we did at the first public meeting, but the focus we'll area would there. be uh, much tighter and it would be around the common. Uh, and I think the idea for the focus area, I know Peter's kind of working on just finishing up the boundary map for what we're kind of defining as the common. But I think we're going to try and go wider on Friday night than just the area around the green space. I think uh, PJ, this was one of your suggestions, was to kind of look at the, the gateways coming into the common um, rather than just the sort of area around the green space. Um, so I think there's some interest in especially sort of transportation connectivity and transportation issues, parking issues. And I think there are some some opportunity areas, I think, on so both sides of the So he's defining boundaries of the areas of influence in addition to the actual study area. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Um, so we'll give people an opportunity on Friday night to talk, kind of talk about that larger area because it is so important, I think, for the town. Um, so breaking up into uh, small groups of maybe eight or ten people, and then there would be uh, a series of probably five to seven questions that we would basically walk the groups through. So this, I think, is where we would need the most help from both the consultant team and from the committee, just like we did in the first meeting, where you would help us facilitate those discussions. Um, then there would be a breakout, excuse me, a, uh, an opportunity to hear from uh, each of the groups, as we did in the first one, so everybody can kind of hear what those issues, opportunities, challenges are, and what people discuss. And then Peter wanted to try to figure out a way for maybe the last 20 or 30 minutes where we could re-engage the larger group as a whole to try to somehow prioritize opportunity areas and challenges so that when we reconvene on Saturday, we're sort of, we're trying to focus on you know, what are the key five issues or the key three issues or the key seven issues, whatever, whatever there seems to be some consensus around so that Saturday is really then sort of taking these areas of influence, the larger area, diving down into the more specific what I would consider the more specific Littleton Common right around the green space and saying these are the key three to five issues um, mm -hmm. that we want to dive into uh, on Saturday. Okay. Uh, so that would wrap up at about 8.45, 9 o'clock on Friday night. Okay. So we have about two and a half hours with, with the public on Friday evening. A um, couple comments. Have we been in contact with the school system about having the middle school on Friday? Okay. Mm -hmm. Secondly, 
uh, do we want to try to get more use of classrooms so that we're not breaking up into small groups in the cafeteria? Correct me if I'm wrong, I wasn't in the cafeteria for the public meeting, but it seemed like it was a very busy, noisy place and maybe wasn't as conducive as it could be to, to, for each group. So if that's desired, I'll just make sure that the school department knows that and they can arrange their custodial schedule to give us a wing of the building or something like that. How many people would you like in a group, do you think? Eight, eight or ten. ten. Yeah, like eight to ten, ideally. So let's call it ten, makes the math easy. And if we were to get as many people as last time, that'd be about 23 rooms uh, at ten per, just to scope it. Right. I don't think we're going to have 23 rooms available to us. Well, I mean, yes. maybe, maybe not. But you if know, you had fewer to, groups to, to, in the cafeteria. It's, yeah, that's the other thing. You wouldn't, I would not necessarily use the cafeteria altogether, but it's a school. There's, yeah. I hope there's 23 classrooms. <laughs> and I, I know that they would probably blanch at giving us all of them, but um, I just want to set the expectation that we would like to use some classrooms and then sure. we, can, we can play it by ear. And your notion of one wing would work. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just go out and take a right and go down that hall, and I think that would probably be sufficient. Yeah. And certainly, I mean, even if we'd gotten two or three groups, more groups out of the cafeteria than we did, I think we would have been fine. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've already broached this uh, with them, so no, it's just the more detail here. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have approached the subject of breakout rooms. It wasn't right. clear yet what we okay. were looking for. Sure. So, yeah, so we'll, we'll, I'll chime in on that. Okay, thanks. Okay. And I have one more comment about how we're defining the common. And I would be very careful about even talking about the green area mm -hmm. because I don't think anybody thinks that a common is just the green space. Mm -hmm. it, am I wrong? I mean, it, no, it is the, the, those storefronts along the green space and the ones going down 110 a little bit and the ones going towards Westford a little bit and the ones heading down towards Air a little bit. Not so much Groton because that's not developed. It's a straight downhill and is, mm -hmm. you know, Right? I mean, just be, I just want to make sure that we're not cheating ourselves out of an opportunity to make sure we get this right. And I'd just be careful. The two little green patches, that's what we think about because that's where the traffic goes, but it's the usage of that area. Now, Eric alluded to what I had asked was right. beyond just that yeah, small area. I agree with that. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't even necessarily think of that as only, okay, take a look at it, and then we'll, cir and then we'll focus down on the green space. It's like, no, no, no. I think we're pretty much talking about that whole like from, you know, we you can you can debate the actual lines, but Donnellan's to the common, the common to maybe just past the post office, and then towards Westford to Yangtze, and that's probably about right for me personally. Uh, <clears throat> if Peter is going to be leaving the group, my bar for him is really high because I attended <clears throat> one of the for assessment sessions that he gave. And he was, his use of maps, <clears throat> I consider to be, uh, he's got an art and a, he just, he he's very good at this. Yes. And he brought together in one room people with, who I don't think ever sat in a room together with each other. Uh, <clears throat> mainly water and people, recreation and space. And apparently they don't speak to each other on alternate Saturdays or something. Anyway, <clears throat> he was very, very helpful. and. The way he led with the maps, I just need to ask, as long as he's got his maps, <clears throat> you don't have to he worry about Peter ranging. He really is amazing. <laughs> he, will, he will go, if necessary, to Groton because in many people's <laughs> minds, that's where the green ends. <laughs> I, mean, I'm, I mean, I have no idea. Please, I, I mean, I, I, I said with that, you. That's my definition. I, I know that is. But, but it's very interesting what he does in meetings. I saw him do it with water, which people couldn't see, and all of a sudden the lights went on. So... Uh, I Just tell Peter this. the bar is set really high, <laughs> really high. We'll let him know. He, he is, I, I appreciate your comment because I've seen him do this and it's really pretty impressive. Now, He's amazing. But thanks for bringing it up, Mike, because we don't certainly want to limit folks. And I think as the conversation goes on, that space or whatever will start to become defined, mm -hmm. at least mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. a, yep. a consensus yep. format of some sort, I should think. So, yeah, big to small. Right. Anybody else have any comments on that? So on Saturday, yeah, that's what's gonna be um, we're gonna have some people who don't go to anything on Friday night. Right. So how does that work? Uh, so I think then in the morning it would start around. Uh, I think it started at nine. Mm -hmm. It's at like nine to twelve, basically. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and there would be an introductory presentation again, just recapping um, what we talked about on Friday and then what came out of fr the discussion on Friday evening, the group discussions, uh, just so that people have an opportunity to kind of catch up. So ideally someone, someone participates in all of this, mm -hmm. but there's going to be those who just do the Friday night piece. There's going to be some who just do the Saturday morning piece. And so the people who are doing Friday night are going to get a chance to identify the issues and maybe winnow, help winnow down. And the people on Saturday, are what's, what, what are they going to be then doing? So Saturday, the way that uh, Peter has it set up is we've taken sort of the issues and the opportunities from Friday, and then Saturday is kind of the visioning piece. So what do we, how do we address the things that people talked about on Friday night? Um, and so his idea is uh, mapping exercises, but using, uh, he's got done this in a couple places where he'll actually um, cut out uh, styrofoam pieces for the existing buildings and he'll, uh, he'll place those on the map, I think using tape or using glue or something, so they're sort of affixed to the map. Um, you know, I envision uh, churches may be something that stay there or town hall might be something that stays there. That's a little far out, but you know, sort of those buildings that are likely not to go away uh, anytime soon. And then the opportunity areas, they may be blank on the map and he'll create different building types out of these styrofoams. They may be colored, um, you know, red versus white or whatever the colors he chooses. And then one building type might be for one story commercial or a two story mixed use or housing or whatever it might be. And then people can sort of look at what that building looks like on that footprint um, in terms of the buildings. And then when it comes to transportation connections or additional green spaces or what have you, there'll be uh, markers available for people to actually start to draw those connections um, on the map using different colors that signify whatever the different elements are um, on the map. And that would also happen in, in groups so that people can have that sort of group dynamic as they're talking about you know, what their suggestions are, what their vision is for the future of the common. Okay. Does that answer the question? Yeah. All right. and, and then I just want to follow up was on the, our rule. You said it would be help, helpful for us to help with facilitation Friday night. Is there any other places you're looking for assistance? And probably Saturday, too, because I think it's going to follow the same, same general idea. Yeah, the same general idea, the, the breakout group discussions. Did you guys you, decide to feed people that Yeah, I was going to get to that okay. second, but you just provided me the opportunity <clears throat> to make the comment I wanted. I expect it's our shared expectation that each of us will be there Friday evening and Saturday morning. I would love to be. I'm out of town. Okay. I, I might be back for Saturday. I definitely will not be available. Okay, we'll, we'll get the uh, alibis in a sec, but is it our shared expectation that I, each of I us will be there? It's a shared expectation. Thank you. I work in the day, but then after that, I have to work again. <laughs> <laughs> He's just looking for shared expectation. <laughs> yeah, that's how it goes. Okay, so first off, it's yes, and then we'll get to your alibi. Okay, no? All right, that's good. Okay, so you're out of town. You may be able to help Saturday morning, though. Got it. You work during the day. What about Friday night? Yeah, Friday night. You're available. Yeah. Are you working Saturday day? No. Okay, you're available. Thank you. Okay, so we all, uh, that's our consensus. Thank you. Good football Friday night, correct? It's a away game. No yeah, I go to away games just yeah. like I go to home games. I hear it, but it is an away game. My point being that I meant to say that. We will have access to the middle school in the parking lot. It will be very quiet in the guards. There won't really that's, be any activity. That's, that's good. Um, and I know at the last public session, we were more facilitating the whole, if we had any comments, we really didn't speak up or talked about it. I have a hard time not providing my own comments about the comment or other types of things. So any suggestions about that? Because I, I, I don't want to be just facilitating something like this. And I'm sure other people in this room mm -hmm. feel yeah, the same way. Well, we certainly have had many opportunities to have input now in the last many months and even the months going forward. And sometimes if you're facilitating a group and you begin offering thoughts, you've done this before, and you could see that maybe the participants begin to withdraw or become combative. So if we're going to be facilitators, let's stick with what the word means. And then there's no reason we can't offer input uh, in a written format or say it's all done and everybody feels comfortable about it. Is that and I've got a couple of thoughts. And maybe do it that way. What do you think? Well, we're clearly going to get a presentation from you guys after it's all said and done, right? And Yeah. It's just what, the only reason you see me hesitating is we have the other charrette coming. But b b b between now and the time we meet with you again as a committee, we have 
two charrettes and a major deliverable. Well, I don't care if it's if it's in February. We will have an opportunity to talk about what happened at the Absolutely. charrettes. Absolutely. So I would yes. be that would be like to me that's where we're going to get our chance to, you know, really have the floor. Are you crazy? Probably, right. frankly, to more effect than maybe because the charrette's going to have like hopefully a hundred people in it. Yeah, I hope so. So even no matter how vociferous you are, you're going to get diluted a little bit, probably more than a little bit. Whereas you, know, you can out-talk me any day sitting here. I, you've done it all the, every time we've been together, so. <laughs> I meant that as a compliment. I sure. did. <laughs> so I don't know. About I, that one. I don't know. I, yeah. I, I think it back to um, But to that point, funny. as far as feedback, after the first one, so come Saturday morning, at the end of Saturday morning, let's gather our thoughts and provide feedback. This went well, this didn't go so well. You know, that sort of stuff. So that come the second charrette, uh, if something just didn't seem to work for us here in Littleton, then you can modify it in the second charrette as necessary. Um, or at least be prepared uh, to offer Absolutely. that right. little bit of... Uh, well, what's it, a month in between the first and the second? Uh, it's about two, 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 weeks. Weeks. two weeks. Yeah, well, the second one is the 14th and 15th of September. If you, uh, you know, get some quick insight on the first first one in between, sure. get to, to Marin, and Marin can send us a small note and mm -hmm. we'll decide whether or not we need a different direction or... Sure. Something along that line. Yep. Uh, when we had the uh, the discussions a couple of times we, with um, Melissa and I in our in our group, we had a couple of people that were a little ticked off about a few things. You did. That's right. So yeah. when we let the one have their discussion, and, and though I totally disagreed with one of them, another one came along and she. It was kind of funny. I said, "Well, how do you feel about it? Do you agree with this?" And it, it's when you you allow them to combat one another. And it was actually worked out pretty well, and, and they each found a common ground. It was good. Mm -hmm. So it was interesting to watch. Yeah. For sure. But so we did that facilitating thing you were speaking of. <laughs> you did it so well, too, Peter. <laughs> Thank you. You did it well. Right. In fact, just, there was not one complaint for you that evening. No, <laughs> no, come on. I complained a lot. <laughs> just one the question to follow up. To the best of your knowledge, is Peter also going to show the maps of the unseen parts of the comic. You got something about these maps, don't you, dude? They have a very big effect on <clears throat> on, on you. On, on, oh, no, on the, the whole world. I wasn't the only one. I'm talking about <clears throat> the water table. Uh, basically, what's underneath the ground, underneath the surface, uh, because that's the real eye, eye opener, and that shifts. It was very interesting to watch at least more than one person, I would say half of the room, shifted their views about what water meant and didn't mean, and the whole business. And he just did it with maps yeah. and with people who knew what they were talking about, which Peter did. And I <clears throat> wouldn't, wouldn't be so excited about it if I didn't see him actually do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's not easy to put all that together. So. I'll have to ask him. Yeah. All right. All right, logistics. What about water and cookies Friday evening, donuts and coffee Saturday morning? Are we okay to do that? Yeah, definitely. All right, now, procuring. Do I have to bake? <laughs> I don't mind, I just got to know ahead of time. You don't wear an apron. Um, I guess the best thing is we, we just buy cookies in the water. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Straight out? Yeah. You're not going to have coffee Friday night? We can have coffee too Friday evening. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Decaf or regular? Doc roast. Doc roast play. Very strong. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy to have that discussion. The school department um, might play into that. Okay. Um, with their so needs. Going Fair enough. And whether or not we're truly using the cafeteria. So. All right. Thank you. We'll make it work. Yeah. And we're just going to have to guesstimate number of people. And work from there. Okay. Anything else on that one? What time should folks who are facilitating get there by? I'm sorry. On that. Friday night or Friday night or Saturday? Uh, Friday, I would say if you're not going to partake in the walking tour. Um, six. Yeah, maybe six. Six could probably work. Yeah. About a half hour before it starts. And then uh, eight thirty Saturday morning. Okay. Anymore on the first charrette? All right, second one. 
uh, at some point it doesn't have to be tonight, but could we get just get a head count of who is actually going to be there Friday, Saturday, or both days? That would really help with planning to make sure that we're staffed. Oh, head count for this two, group? Two, three, four, yeah, just so five, we have a sense. six, seven, eight, I'm, at least. I can count me. I'll be on a plane by then. Oh, you will be? I yeah, know. after you shift, I couldn't shift my flights. Oh, no. After Sorry. you shift to the, the time for the yeah, I couldn't just, just pay the change fee. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'll, I'll send them. I'll give you the receipt. <laughs> At least seven of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't hear that alibi before. Is that alibi? <laughs> I wish it were. Okay. The I second trip. Married that weekend in Vegas. <laughs> Well, you should mention that. <laughs> All right, go ahead, please. So the second shred, uh, as Judy mentioned, October 14th and 15th, same thing, Friday and Saturday. Um, in terms of format, this one we were thinking would be a little bit different since it's not going to be, or at least as of right now, not planned to be place-based, so focusing on a specific location in town. Uh, we thought, given all that we've heard from this group and from the core assessment meetings, doing the existing conditions research and from the public meeting, it seems that there are a couple of um, sort of hot-button topics or hot-button issues or opportunities in town that might be worth spending a little bit more time on uh, with the public. And we thought that the charrette, a, we call it a charrette only because I think, in essence, it's just a deeper dive into a place or a topic, so we'll use the term for now, but um, sort of a deeper dive into these specific topics. I know um, Marin's floated a couple emails. I know Peter's floated an email with some suggestions about what those topics might be, and we'd hoped that we could get some clarity from you, uh, from this group tonight, so that we can kind of nail down either a short list of topics that we might want to go forward with or, or the list. Um, and I would just add that Marn and I talked on Friday on our weekly call, and she had asked me if I could come up with um, an activity for the uh, for the fair on Saturday, um, just kind of a question or something that people could do when they come to the booth. In addition to talking with you yes, all, that would be great, actually. <laughs> so the idea that um, we were kicking around this morning was uh, having a board or some way for people to use a couple of sticky dots to maybe. Um, show their preference for topics for the second charrette. So maybe we could come up tonight with, I don't know, five or six different ideas. And then in addition to your input that you provide to us tonight, the public could also have a chance to weigh in um, at the fair, at the fair. on Saturday. And we could sort of take those two things together early next week and then come up with the final list of, say, maybe three topic areas or something like that. That's that good. makes sense. Mm -hmm. I'd like you to be able to audible, too, on what we learned from the first charrette. Because while the common may be the subject area, we I can see excursions from there. You know, what about? Uh, I, I'm sure some will say, well, what about Foster Street and the buildings that are already there? And as facilitators, you know, we'll try and you know, certainly keep it. But if we get enough of that, well, then, and I'm just using that as an example, then maybe we're, that's something we would audible to if we weren't already prepared. At least, and, and maybe we can't give it the, the depth you'd like to give it. <coughs> Excuse me, I understand that. But at the very least, uh, have the ability to address it. Yep. Yeah, so it may not be as detailed as having buildings cut out for the Foster Street area, but we could at least maybe have some maps and have an actual a robust discussion about the area. Yeah. And then when the that second threat's happening, as you're going down the subjects we've already picked, we may run out of time, may have extra time, or if it begins to segue in that direction, at least uh, somewhat prepared. Anything else on the charrette itself, the second charrette that well, is? Do we want do we want to come up with a list of choices? Yeah, right. We, yeah, right. This way, I can. I just need some maybe six. I don't know, six topic areas or so to so that we can prepare the board with enough time that I can mm -hmm. get it tomorrow before Saturday. You have a volunteer to write on the whiteboard. I have really bad handwriting. I don't mind doing it, but nobody's going to like it. I'll do it. Thank you. <laughs> I have the same problem with Mike, though, but I'll try really hard. Right. Just so we don't lose track as we get to the sixth or seventh one. <coughs> All right, so you want to just yell out? Is that what you want? Or yes. What? All right. Yeah. What do you think, folks? I think the public facility should definitely be on there. Okay. We've had a lot of feedback on that. You know, sort of like public facilities? Yeah. So community center. Com community facility. center, oh. right. Council line. That, that specifically, that's what I mean. Not like a garage for the DBW, yeah. which would be a public facility. I heard a lot of uh, walkability, pedestrian, bike access, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, that's 
pretty broad topic, but I think it's. I should say some more. I, I, I don't mind because Peter's going to show them that. <laughs> 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 and they'll get right into it. <clears throat> what, what's the. I wish Peter were here for the correct term. Modern waste. Modern, what, what's the equivalent of sewage, but it's not sewage, it's something else. Waste management. Ah, thank you. Modern waste management. Water and waste management. Sorry, water and waste management. Yeah, that'll, that'll cover both. There is an issue with water as well. That's good. I don't think we ought to use in between 495. I'm sorry. Is the median? Yeah. Passive and active recreation. Is passive when you sit and watch your kids run around? I was just going to ask, what do, do you think of passive recreation? What do you uh, think of open space for hiking and, yeah. and versus playing fields. Okay. That's just my definition. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody have a different idea in mind about passive and active recreation? Yeah, I, I, this just comes up a lot, so it again, helps. Again, passive as I watch people walk up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Hiking is hiking. Well, anyway, he's in better shape than we are. It, it, instead, instead of well, maybe of instead of making judgments, so I just called it yeah. recreation. And is that open space that? and recreation? Open well, space, yeah. All right. That's more like uh, organized plus housing in general. Hold on, one, one at a time, one at a time, folks. Partly, go ahead, please. Well, I was, just, um, I was saying that my group talked a lot about housing, housing development, and elderly housing. All right, so we're having a conversation on the um, recreation. Do you want to go back to that? Anybody have anything else? Well, I was just joking about the passive and active and whether or not. Organized sports, I think, is more along the line of, of one that should be active, and as far as passive is concerned, it's just... The open space and recreation? You want to change so it to back? Open space and yeah, recreation. Yeah. No, no, change passive and uh, Oh, I don't think you need to pigeonhole. It's good right where it is. Yeah. No, ch check out the word passive. That, yeah. <coughs> open space and recreation. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, and I would say... They, yeah, I mean, they, it's true. I mean, a vista is a vista. Yeah. You don't have to hike it. You just got to look at it. Yeah. You know. And the terms have certainly become somewhat synonymous. Yeah, yeah. But and the okay. way you would present it, passive and active, I know what you meant yeah, by that. that's okay. fine. I'm, I'm fine with that. It that just gets together. debated a lot, so oh, no. it's helpful to know what yeah. people have in mind. Yeah. Yeah. Agriculture? Agriculture's mm -hmm. good. I was also thinking of um, industrial and commercial development, non-retail. Mm -hmm. Sorry? No Walmart. <laughs> well, I'm just talking about, you know, commercial development right. is, right, it's both the shops, but it's also right. office parks and office dentist buildings. offices and Industrial things like buildings. that. And it's right. just. It, um, and I'm going to use your comment to offer a critique for us as a group. As, as members of the committee, let's not say yes or no to stuff. Uh, we want folks not feeling intimidated because if they already feel that a board or something has an opinion on something, that there becomes a reluctance to offer an opinion, I would suggest. So um, I think the way you put it up there is good, and so uh, you, you understand what I'm saying, Barton? Mm -hmm. okay. Business, thank, thank you. Uh, business, small business, family, whatever. I don't know how to word it. The small businesses in the town. Economic development. Yeah. More of a small business and more economic development. How is that different from industrial and commercial development? We could have what economic development and then those <coughs> like industrial is like IBM, the car dealerships, but I'm talking about the small. Okay. You mean retail? Yes. Okay. But it doesn't have to be retail. It no, could be a carpenter, it could be a, a local carpenter or a local right. plumber. Right. Those are retail services because you can have small businesses that are industrial, that are commercial. Yeah. Um, sometimes when we use the term industrial and commercial, yeah. we're talking, yeah, the IBMs, yeah. the hydrogen plant, um, on and on, you know, large concerns versus 10 or fewer employees. About few employee businesses. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> okay. 
was there much discussion at all the tables about uh, <clears throat> town finance? I'll just use the word town finances. It came in various forms. We're paying too much tax. Yeah, it, it, the taxes financial conundrum. It gets brought up to me all the time. Maybe not a lot in the, the community forum, but especially now that that's a big issue for sure. I'm oh, sorry. I think especially now it's a big issue. I didn't hear it so much from our group. It wasn't a big discussion around yeah, but, that, but just in general, yeah. it's a big, big topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah but the problem is, how does it fit into master plan, master planning? Sorry. How did that fit into master planning? Well, you know, I mean, uh, no, <laughs> really, Mike. I mean, it's a specific issue. I get that, yeah. but it's a very granular issue. Like, oh, we can't afford to do all this. I mean, mm -hmm. if we want to talk about tax structure or things like that, that's a different story. Just our taxes are too high. I don't see how that fits I in. I was trying to stay neutral yeah, on it, right. looking around for right. you know right. a way to phrase it right. so it captures what yeah. the town town financing. Yes, for purposes planning. of these yeah. meetings. I would encourage you to focus on physical pieces of the community. I think mm. a charrette or a deep dive, if you will, about taxes, um, I, I, I just wouldn't recommend. I don't think it's the purpose of these the meetings. <clears throat> these meetings are really supposed to help inform kind of policy framework and the plan around areas or physical features or facilities in the town. So I think things like public facilities or agriculture, open space, housing, th those are all related to physical development. But I think when you start getting into property taxes, it's a different kind of meeting. Well, it eventually comes down. Of course, that. absolutely. I agree with so you. even though we, uh, we, we may... Oh, yeah, you're going to have the discussion. We're going right. to pinpoint all of these things, and we're going to put in an order what's more important to us. <clears throat> and at the end... You know, a dollar in and a dollar out is what's going to determine what gets done off the uh, Absolutely. Sense. Understood. So the statement about well, taxes, though, yeah. you know, pointed and, and fragrant, it doesn't smell good this early in the game, but eventually it will. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So for something like industrial and commercial development, how would you address that in a this kind of meeting? Well, in this kind of meeting, it's really around where. Where you know, do we already have it, This is very much right? physical vision of the community. Well, where do you and want so, it? Where do you where want do we it? already have it and where would might yeah. we want to put it yeah. other places? Yeah. <coughs> and you may yeah, have, have, would think, you have I a discussion on how much of it you yeah. want? What do you think, Paul? It could be. Yeah. Like how much is the town the community willing to tolerate yeah. you know, yeah. versus other choices of development? Yeah. I was going to ask one. Do you want to consider town governance structure? <laughs> That's good but one. does that yep. belong in this kind yeah, of way? Yeah, again, I'm, I'm going to make... I put it as a question. Yeah, I make it, I'm going to make the same point about town government as I am about town finances. I don't see it as a, a planning, master planning, even though it was brought up. If we want to, as a community, have a talk about town governance, we can have a talk about town governance. If we have too many selectmen or not enough selectmen, if we have too many boards or not enough boards, that's for town meeting to determine how we're going to govern our town. I don't necessarily see it as a master plan. It's an interesting topic. It's a it's an important topic. I have no problem debating it, but I don't know that I want to do it in this this process. Yeah, I think the only confusion for us is governance was one of the elements you wanted and to The other problem I have with the whole town so. governance thing is a lot of the comments were we don't like the people that are doing the government. Yeah, that's, that's definitely not a master plan <laughs> thing. Right. 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 Structure is certainly to find a debate but if we were if we're in the process of looking at how to plan the future of the town mm -hmm. how we run the town I think is important yeah I won't fall on the sword on it uh, I offered it because I'm certainly interested in it and I think it's worthy of discussion and you may have nailed it on the head that it's worthy of discussion perhaps on this forum and my, my concern is is that it's going to get a lot of votes and we're going to end up doing it at the expense of doing something else that I think is more salient to master planning. And I was going to ask more salient. I don't mean I don't mean to say that that, no. that town governance isn't salient. It's just these I think no, with these you. things are it's more a part benefit from this process. Because the question right. I was going to ask are eight items too many? I'd probably try to keep it to six. Yeah. Okay, so, so we're going to vote a couple of these things off the island. Yeah. There you go. Right. I just want to add one more. I don't know if it comes on this public facility municipal infrastructure. We'll leave that with public facilities. We're, we're going to knock two of those off to begin okay. with anyway, so you keep adding them, that means we got to get rid of three. <laughs> right? Yep, that's right? All right, so what are we going to get rid of? No, we're not getting rid of anything. Oh, well, so I think just we want to just wanna focus on the six The board, things. I think we would probably like to just have six. Yeah. So you can combine seven and eight, I think. Yeah, you probably yeah, could. Yeah, the economic yeah. 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 Just, yeah. 
And that's seven and tough. That's another one we're going to use. Six, seven, come on. Well. Uh, economic and commercial development, I think yes. it really is yeah. focused on the commercial development aspect yeah. of it. Thank you. you know, we can almost put, put part of open space recreation in that in with the walkability bike access because that's. I think that's a I think those are discrete elements. Yeah. I think they're total different yeah. separate. Yeah, really I'd recommend There's doing some overlap, but I think they're pretty. They were pretty. That was a pretty strong topic I heard about walkability across multiple groups. Yeah. I think transportation as a whole could be an interesting topic, kind of all the different modes of transportation. I mean, it might be bike access that go along in public trails, but yep. it also could be sidewalks and it could be sure. uh, dedicated lanes and things. Right. So, yep. right. yeah, so it too could be changed to transportation modes and then mm -hmm. combine it with walking ability, bikes, trains. Getting around. Planes, trains, and automobiles. I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose that aspect of. I put it. Was it non-motor vehicle transportation is probably fine, but I don't want to lose the. I don't want to. I don't want to get sucked into traffic and traffic lights. Oh, I don't either. With that, with this topic. Yeah, I don't either. Because I didn't hear as much of that so far. I right. heard a lot more about uh, the on-street on facilities, the sidewalks primarily, the off-street trail network, and then. Um, especially in the economic development core assessment meeting, the idea about making connections between the train station and some of the businesses and the, the common area, too, was a big piece of it. Well, that very first meeting we had, and we added up all those little dots all over creation. I mean, what was the majority of the people that were at that? What was their biggest statement? I mean, what, what, what did they want the most out of all of those? I'm, I'm asking you. you. You counted the dots, my son. Uh, transportation was definitely there. Um, I think economic development was up there. Public facilities was definitely up there. Uh, senior center, community center, library, fire station. Uh, housing was there, but in it was different, different thing, ways. I noticed. That, I'm sorry to interrupt you. That that was something that didn't come up till the very end, and someone brought up, and then all of a sudden it was a flashpoint with with our group. You recall at the very end that came up, and it, it was it wasn't on any of the tip of their tongues till the very end. And some it's said, because well, nobody about? ever wants to talk about housing. Because yeah. mm -hmm. it's we don't want to get old. It's so. <laughs> because it's such a loaded gun. And then I think all everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, and I think coming out of the public meeting and the core assessment meetings, I would almost say that some combination of four, five, and six. So open space and recreation, housing. In agriculture were talked about as this bubbling issue that's been going on for a while in terms of how is the town sort of Yin -yang speaking, of yes, things, right? you know, it's yeah. talking with, dealing with whatever it it's might be, large place property place. owners, <laughs> and what's you know what's the secession plan for some of the farms in town? Are they going to continue to be farmed? Are they is the plan to sell them off? Are there no heirs for those large properties? Um, you know what's I could see a topic about that. Um, you know, and does the town have a prioritize a way to prioritize? You know, what are the most important? Who are the most important people that we want to be talking to? What what big tracts of land might be coming up, uh, either for sale or potentially for for conservation or whatever it might be over time? Um, do, do, does any do you happen to have seen in the, the core assessment the assessment the one number? Is there a projection of the population of Littleton? <clears throat> as we go through the time of the rewrite. In other words, when this is, I think it's what, 2030, right? We would, I mean, that's the population, we're going to certainly mention the population estimate projections that are yeah. out there, yeah. which are basically UMass Donahue Institute and, um, right. and MAPC, and I think the Donahue Institute's probably the ones we will use. But you, right now, you have no idea what that projection off the top, is. I don't know what it is off the top of my head. I could try to look while yeah. we're here. But. We pulled it. We have it. It's in the yeah. demographic it's, section. Okay. I just don't remember, like Judy said, where it is. No, no, the reason I ask is, is that that's going to impact that list, mm -hmm. right? That's all, it's all, you know, it doesn't change the list. It just is how big are we going to be or not to be? Well, to that point, Mike, we, we know that this particular population is going to be increasing at the most dramatic rate. So, although I don't have numbers 
<clears throat> that's why <laughs> There, there are some issues at the Donahue Institute there they've revised. Oh, okay. Yeah, they've got new, new projections out. There, there, yeah, new ones because there's something's happening in Metro Boston. That's, all, right. all right, let's do that because it's we're going to have, we'll have the data. We're in the weeds. The housing we want in there is a broad uh, yep. rubrics. Is that yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Can I say four? That's my quote. Sorry, Mike, I don't think. People are going to get passionate about modern modern waste management. They better be. Once yeah. They do, once they do, once they do the common, they're going to say be. it's going to come out. Oh yeah. It'll come oh, yeah. out of the common and, and everywhere example. else. But yes. Um, you know, yes. Water management, for example, this year is going to cost another hundred thousand dollars that it didn't cost us last year. It's one of those things that you just as an you, example. You care when it backs up, but otherwise it doesn't really. No, not talking waste. I'm talking water. <laughs> Same thing. Out of the aquifer. <laughs> Gee, from a yeah. sustainability guy, I'm surprised, surprised you come out with that one. I'm just talking about what's going to resonate with people. Right. We're just talking about looking at a, di at a no, dive in. We're session. talking about a charrette topics. Yeah. Right. Not solving charrette problems yet. Yeah. 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 I'd, like to I'd like to keep water and waste management in there. Just keep all the ones that are in there in there. Yeah, yeah. so this is seven, the way seven, it is. Seven? Yeah. Okay. Seven. So I added his for number nine. We got rid of two, and that's what you wanted. There you go. So then we'll pair that based on the feedback from the public. And probably a subsequent yeah. email discussion, or however it takes place, will pare that down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, in, in absurdum, you know, everything comes down, and everybody's talking about one of those items and nothing else. Mm -hmm. Boom, we concentrate on that item. Yeah. But you Seven might see spread you, equally. You might have a line of demarcation at three or four, yeah. and then the other one's trailing the curve. Yeah. So we'll see how okay. it goes. But I, I do think it's valid. We did have a session with 200 people there that had dots next to a lot of things, mm -hmm. and I think it should be given some weighting and mm -hmm. not. Besides what we get on Saturday. Yep. Yeah, we'll go back and double check those two. Okay. Yeah, bring them both together. That, that well, there's probably going to be an overlap of some sort of folks who participate on that Friday and Saturday, as from the public forum. They may well be new actors. Mm -hmm. So, it's your point, very good. Okay. All right. All right. Fair participation. If we're done with the shirt, I apologize. Well done. All right. Fair participation. Uh, so this Saturday, who can uh, come out? We talked about it yeah, the other day. Here. We're still all good for that? Yeah. Yep. Yep. I'll right. be there in the morning. Go ahead. Now, where yeah, does yeah, this take yeah. place? Day Park, right by the fire station. Okay. All right. Um, I'll be there. Yep. Okay. But well, we still got the uh, good participation, so that's good. Um, you, who else is going to the football game besides Mike, but you're up in the announcer booth? You said you were going. Peter, you'll be there. Right. I'll have the box of T-shirts. So, um, and I'm working with Mike Lynn, and we'll get them to the cheerleaders so they can toss them. We I've asked the selectmen. Too. Hmm? Can toss them too. Yes, you can <laughs> toss them too. We're going to get past the second row, right? I know, that's right. I'm trying to let the children see most of the yeah. so. yeah. I wonder if this, the selectmen have been very, very supportive for this whole process. Mm -hmm. Um, but they provide a good public face of the broad-based town of all the residents. And I've asked them to be there. The selector? The selector, yes. And I've asked them to be there Friday evening at about 6.30. So as people are coming through buying their tickets, to be handing out the little flyers that we have uh, okay. to people. So it gives that uh, support a more public face, if you will. Uh, and they're all happy to do that, uh, except Joe Knox is going to be in Pittsburgh at that point in time. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you. Okay, with that, are we ready to transition to talk about goals, folks? Apparently, this is a brand new document, so it's not the same as the one I called out. So, sorry, we're we talking about goals or the vision statement or both? No, we'll begin at all. I'll pace myself accordingly. No, you did good. So this, this is all the vision stuff and the goals are on the back. All right. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Hopefully pace now. <laughs> all right. Just as you said earlier, if you give everybody a Word document, you're going to get that many inputs. So, 
I guess I'm looking for a bit of a guided discussion for us to create you know, an approach on how we want to look at the vision statement and then transition to the goals from it. I think that's fine. Um, because it seems to me we have a vision and then goals to reach that vision. Would that be our calculus? Yes. So, all right, now we had a discussion as to whether the vision statement should be a tome or a short paragraph. Where are we just on that basic philosophy? And there are a couple of versions in here, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I want to see if folks, sure. if we think a long version or a short version, and then we can talk about content. That's fine. All right, while you're enumerating, um, I've certainly thought the shorter one. Um, if you want people to read stuff, short is a little bit better. To be as concise as possible, uh, I think is helpful. Yeah, personally, I like a headline. I really do. I know it's hard. We had a long discussion around this, and I know. But it, it is always helpful just to get the, it's like a newspaper. Like, what's, what are we talking about? And then you can get more details below that. And vision is tending to be more of a, a little bit of a more generic thing at a higher level, and then goals of the details. Yeah, so what I'm suggesting is we hmm. kind of settle on a structure, and then you go to content. Well, looking at these two, I, I, the one that's titled Short and Vision Statement, uh -huh. I prefer. Okay. Not than the other two longer ones that are like bulleted. Okay. Which, which shorter one do you like? Do you like the very first one that has no red in it? Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. That, okay. That's the only one that says shortened yeah. vision statement. And the other one says a shorter version of the list. Okay, got it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, that's the goals. Right, yeah. So the short, so talk about the vision statement. Yeah. I like the shortened vision statement. I might, I actually like that one right the way it's written. I wouldn't necessarily wordsmith that to any right. great extent, but. That I'm open to suggestion on that, but All right. So uh, Mike likes the uh, structure of a shorter one. Other folks, I'm in Okay. I actually like the, the the last page, the bulleted shorter version of the goals. We're not there. I, I think that it's important to to uh, to separate the. Um, I mean, I get confused in this shortened vision statement that it's, it's just, it's a block of prose and I can't keep track of what it's talking about. I find that the, the numbered things, I can read them and understand what they are pretty clearly. That's just my problem. No, and I'm with you on the goals, but for a vision statement? So this is like a oh. this is going to be a separate discussion. Oh, that's a separate discussion? Yeah. Okay. And the vision, you can, mm -hmm. I can see the horizon. <coughs> The goals, how do I get to the horizon? I'm a, the uh, shortened vision statement, I, when I first read it, I still like, a couple of times, it makes it unique, plans for changes to the landscape, and supports the people who contribute to the town's sense of community. Peter, can I interrupt you one sec? Sure. Structure first is what I'd like us to put to bed, and then we'll deal with the content. So would you like a short version or a long version? I like it short. Okay. Other folks? Short? Okay. Short. short. Okay. I think we got a consensus on the short version. Now, for the content of the short version. Peter, go ahead, please. Now I'm all done. <laughs> <laughs> you want to take it sentence by sentence? I just think that, that doesn't, that I don't think fits properly into the way it says and supports the people who contribute to the town sense of community. I mean, see, you'd like I to find that funny that you say that because you're the biggest proponent of this process helping Littleton get back to the one you remember when you grew up where people felt like they were a part of the community. I didn't always say that people you know, felt like they were part of the community. We would, your neighbor, you helped your neighbor. Right. Painted his house, you you know, you raked right. his lawn. He he was gone for you know business. You shoveled his his driveway. Right. We used to drive around. My father would take us out in the Volkswagen bus. By the time we got through the whole neighborhood, there were more people in the bus than in their houses, singing Christmas carols and stuff. That's that's what I liked about the community Littleton was when I was a kid. Right. People helping each other. I saw a guy walking in my neighborhood the other day, and I've been living here for fifty something years. 
I didn't know who he was. I used to, I didn't know the streets in my neighborhood, Abenaki, Sagamore. I knew it's just people say, you know where so and so this road is? No, who are you looking for? And that I knew by the name of the persons, not by the roads. I and it's, so it's, if we it's change, semi disheartening to yeah, but to that, not that's know exactly what I'm saying. That, that's what this statement is trying to drive towards. And supports the people who contribute, contribute to, to the, the sounds of the community. The, well, the people like, like you who people. want the people to come together yeah. and do all support each other. Yeah. That's what this statement is all about. Hmm? I, I think he's making the observation that we want to support people whether they contribute to the town's well being or not. That's it. it just to me, I mean, it sounded a little. I have a friend that really doesn't do anything in it, but I still got to support them because they live here. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate that part of it. All right. <laughs> I, that, that just one, just that one sentence out of all of it, that, that one small. All right, that's good. I see, I see. Um, so that's if it. we take the people who contribute, to et cetera, and make and supports community spirit or a sense of community spirit, supports people. Forget the people. Yeah, I was, I was, I'm, I'm wrestling with the people piece too. I'm not so, crazy about it, but supports um, the town's sense of community. And yeah, I think that nails that's, it. That's yeah. it, right yeah. there. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, because the, the only you know, yeah, just take out the just take out the little the little phrase. People who contribute to. Yeah, it. correct. Yeah. Strike that. Supports the town sense of community and and cooperation. The town sense yeah. of just uh, or just community. If you want. Yeah, maybe stop there. Support the town sense of community. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Okay, please. All right. Second sentence. Littleton will continue to stand on a strong financial footing while making investments to improve upon the quality of the facilities and services offered in town. Good. Yeah. Next. How about throwing sustainable before investments? Making sustainable investments is what you'd like. Well, I sure hope Stephen Udi's making sustainable investments. Yeah, I hope <laughs> if we can, there goes triple A or whatever. Um, <laughs> but did you want sustainability well, to stand on its own? <laughs> I could go with the beach on its own, but I'm trying to fit it in some place in the existing structure if I could. This gets to the heart of how we're using the term sustainability. Well, hold on. Because how about too? the quality and sustainability? Both, both, both the economic as well as yeah. long term. How about right? the quality and sustainability of the facilities and services offered in town? Okay. Say that again, I'm sorry, Mike. The quality and sustainability of the facilities, well, facilities and services service. offered in town. So that's why you want to insert it? I'm fine with that. Did you get that, Judy? I'm getting it. Yeah, we're yeah. both getting it. Yeah. And that was between a pawn and the? Mike? No, after quality. Oh, after, after quality. quality. Oh, thank you. Quality and sustainability of the facilities and services mm -hmm. offered in the town. Mm -hmm. Everybody okay with that? Yep. Yeah. All right. It's the next sentence, the town will support its children, seniors, families, employees, and individuals by offering housing at a variety of price points, quality education, a well-connected and accessible transportation network, employment opportunities, and supportive services. Uh, technically speaking, the, we, the town cannot offer housing. We don't sell housing. Right. That, that's the one I struggle with. Yeah. I understand the, 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 the philosophy of it, and I support that, but... I don't know how they don't set housing prices. Nope, can't do it. Markets. No, but you, your policies can certainly have an effect on housing right. prices. That's why we got to be more general in how we state that. Promoting, so like I said, I support, I support the philosophy of the statement. This that that's you're not going to be able so to do offering that. Offering these facilities, yeah, promoting, and promoting instead of offering. Yeah. Promoting would work. You still can't promoting promote diverse housing. Yeah. Promote, pr promoting housing at a variety of price points. Uh, no, we, we can't, can't do that either. either. We can't yes, do that. Yes, you can. Absolutely, you can. Facility instead of offering? Yeah, I, I, I got to agree with Mike on this. I, no, it's, I don't like the wording because the town has no power to set prices. Mm -hmm. the, town the town has, has the, a lot of power to no. offer opportunities to encourage developers and um, the builders. The town can have zoning to require affordable housing. Well, that's affordable housing. I mean, but I mean, but I mean, the, the town. Even can, that, you can't set the price on affordable housing. You can have that's zoning that requires affordable housing, so you would be promoting affordable housing. Well, that's, pr but that's not price points. No, I'm just saying it. Oh, okay. See, I see price points. Providing, as, well, but that's. You got to sell everything for two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars, or yeah, nothing more. I think than that. you're reading it too. Well, yeah. I, I guess the issue is, do you think that the town? Yeah. Does does local government have a responsibility or role in the provision of housing? Does it have responsibility for the ro for a role in the provision of jobs, for an employment base, for a tax base? Yes, to all that. Okay. Um, we're just trying to work through some words, though, that we're happy with. 
that support what we You're think. You're happy with. No, that we're happy with. Oh. You got to go first, remember? <laughs> offering the support to encourage you. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think I think Mike's had an issue with the word price points, not so much the verb. So if you say promoting instead of offering, but just find some other nomenclature that talks about so can we use the word encouraging? A variety of housing types. Encouraging take measures that encourage. I think yeah. Bartlett's onto something there. Because that's what you do with zoning. You make, yeah, I like that. that that's good. That's that's encouraging is offering to encouraging. Bartlett was talking. Let Bartlett say something. Oh, no, I, th Sorry. I think that if, if the word price points is, is the issue, then we can have promoting or whatever the verb is, housing, a variety of types of housing or something like that, that we change it to. Yeah. Kinds of housing, other than of price, housing price points. Yeah, that's true. Housing options. Housing. A variety of housing types. Which types, options? Types. Okay. If everybody okay with doing it that way? Do we strike what you, uh, you are looking for, Judy, as far as what you're trying to achieve out of it? No, this is fine. I mean, this is okay. Okay, so the answer was yes then. <laughs> no, a variety of housing types is fine. Okay, no. I just no wanted to make it clear that, that it's not that, that the town does in fact have a very important role in how housing ultimately is priced. I just think that's I think it's important for people to understand that communities mm. do have a role in regula regulating housing prices by virtue of the way that they regulate housing development. That's all I was trying to say. Okay, fair enough. Are we changing the word offering? I thought you were going to go promoting encouraging. and promoting. encouraging. Okay. I just want to make sure I didn't. I like, like encouraging better than promoting. Yeah, that's fine. Because I just we, want to make sure we were changing. Because when a developer comes before that. us, we mm -hmm. can encourage. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, yeah. All right. So if we're okay with that. All right. Okay, next sentence. Community leaders will consider the social, fiscal, and environmental impacts of proposed well, policy. The only problem is, is that by changing that verb, you now have a disconnect in the rest of a sentence. Because I don't think okay. you want to encourage quality education. I think right. you want to provide it. Okay, so then we just and provide mm -hmm. quality education, a well connected, accessible transportation network employment. Does that work for you? Yeah. Encouraging a variety of housing types and providing right. quality education, a well connected, and accessible transportation network. Yeah. yeah. Now, you don't provide employment opportunities other than as a municipality. So do you want to encourage a variety of housing types and employment opportunities? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's consistent. Yep. Yep. No, you, 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 yep. you catch on to our train of thought. Mm -hmm. You must do this a lot. <laughs> now you want to use semicolons? So, or? so it would be provide then Encouraging a variety of housing types and employment opportunities and providing a quality education, well-connected and accessible transportation network, and services. Yep, that covers it. Okay. And, okay. and you can wordsmith the pronunciation, the punctuation and the like. Is to, That's fine. Yeah. So it's good English. Yeah, serial, good serial commas we need. <laughs> yeah, how to get lost in the comma loop. <laughs> All right, ready for the next sentence? Yeah. Community leaders will consider the social, fiscal, and environmental impacts of proposed policies and regulations for future generations to come. Okay, um, I like the word shall. It's much more prescriptive and instead of will. <clears throat> now, this is a vision statement. Everything else is will. It's not an implementation statement. So right, fair enough. Yeah. yeah I think how we the doing? will is probably you, you the tone won me you want. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You won me. Yeah, this this isn't this is the the financial policies discussion yeah. <laughs> that we used to have. We used to have those with those. <laughs> the statement of work. Huh? Yeah, will shall. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Are we okay with the sentence then as written yes. without PJ's edit? Mm -hmm. So why only community leaders will consider? Well, would you want to include in that then? No, I was just thinking like. I think the, the goal of this statement, as I read it, is that we we we're telling the community leaders, whoever they may be, that we don't want short-term decision making oh, okay. without right. lack of planning. Mm -hmm. That's okay. right, Mike. That That's you can't right. just continually put out a fire after fire after fire. Okay. You know, you got to have okay. a plan and think about how that, that the long-term impact of if we do this or we don't do this now, what's that going to mean down the road? Mm -hmm. okay. Impacts on. 
I mean, they're, they're the ones making you know the bulk of the decisions. So I, I got it. That's fine. Social and fiscal environmental impact of proposed policies and regulations on future generations to come. Yes. Can, you know what? When I first read that, Mike, I didn't get. It's good. I, like I, I got a more of a softer statement. Uh -huh. I like the term long term, right in here. That 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 resonated with me when you said this is oh. the, you know the big picture, you know not just the the, the knee jerk. I need to do this next this year. Can we would be okay with? I don't want to be redundant, but would we say consider the long term social fiscal and environmental impacts? You don't think that's redundant with if the I'm end wondering of the if it might be. It might be. For the end of the it's implied. Right it's here. implied the way it's written now. It's more explicit the way you're saying it. Right. I mean, you could say we'll consider the long term impacts and you could strike for future generations yeah. to come. You could you could do that too. That would be more explicit and not redundant. Right. Future generations. Do you think people are actually going to read this <laughs> and pick apart the verbs and the pronouns and the predicates and the, Ten minutes and the structure and the But if we do it for them now, if we do it properly now, we'll be ready to answer their criticism for the way hey, Barla people just liked. made a good point. Long term and short term could only be a difference between ten minutes and three weeks. Yeah. Future generations <laughs> means future generations. <laughs> sure does. <laughs> Long term and short term are relative. <laughs> yes, future generations. That's fine. That's, That's absolute true. We use yes. capital gains. Huh? So what? So what would you like to do with this sentence? Leave it. 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 Get out. Really? All right. <laughs> Moving on. Littleton will be a place where residents continue to feel welcomed and invited to share the responsibility of helping make decisions to improve the town's future. Littleton shall be. I have one uh, added word, if you will. Share the responsibility and fulfillment of helping make decisions too. That sounds like a goal. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Well, the, the, the way I was thinking of it is yeah. it, not only the responsibility, but the joy of participating. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's the vision. Yeah, we've witnessed that. <laughs> you want here? That's joyful. <laughs> That's what? Joyful. Now we're Fulfillment or Christmas. satisfaction? Um, Responsibility and satisfaction? I see fulfillment as a uh, higher... Um, Helping make decisions to improve them. You know, you know. It, you know take a thing out of sociology. It seems for me... That's something out of English, too. <laughs> fulfillment is a higher state of... Um, Ecstasy, so to speak, than his satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's actually an, that's a, actually a very nice word. I was just thinking about all the years that I've said to myself as a town official in my own community that if this ever gets to the point where I'm not satisfied, where I'm not getting any satisfaction out of this anymore, it's time to go because then you become very bitter and yeah. you don't want to deal with people. And, so that's what was what's what was behind my. Uh, it's really satisfaction word, but can be an absolute word. I think fulfillment is oh, actually a really yeah, nice word. Yeah. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Yep. Um, um, the, the final sentence is your wrap up, and it's it, it's only addressed to residents. Is that a conscious decision? Well, the previous sentence is addressed to community leaders. What were you thinking? Well, I'm just saying we want to make this a welcome place, not just for residents, for businesses, for other things. But it's all a balance, right? So I'm just. I just the fact that it's just explicitly to the residents. Well, they're the only ones who really have the ability to make decisions that improve the town's future. They're just That's, asking the question yeah. as to whether this is an, you know a conscious statement that they we're trying to state that it's. I think some of it was also in response to some of the things that I heard about people mm -hmm. not feeling like boards and committees or officials appointed or elected were sort of listening to the input that was provided. Mm -hmm. So this was kind of my way of trying to work some of that in there. Mm -hmm. The thing that, in terms of the continuing, what I always hear in this town is the continuing of the small town feel, the rural atmosphere, the the neighborhood type feeling people get, you know, the quality place to live. Um, and maybe it's covered elsewhere, but I just, uh, somehow that's, I'd, I'd like to see, let me close with something of what, that may, maintains the kind of the spirit and the, and the feeling that this town has. Um, that resonates with me more than just the feeling welcomed. I don't know. Feeling welcomed didn't jump out to me as, 
about this town for about it's a it's, it's in there, but not as much as the as the general feel of what it's like to live in a community like this. Well, I, isn't that addressed in the first sentence though? Mm -hmm. Preserve the characteristics. Your use of the word welcome is not in the same context as it's used here. This is the residents are welcomed and invited to participate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, share the responsibility. The not language. welcome, like welcome to my home. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you put this out there and people were headed different ways. So sure. I was putting a split between the two verbs. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. How are you feeling about Hold this? Hold on. <laughs> Good. Listen. Good. Does that work for you? Yep. It's fine. Toronto? Yeah. Bartlett? I'm good. Mike? Yes. Um, Gary? I'm still wrestling with those two verbs, so. All right. We'll have a good time. Let me know who wins. <laughs> All right. So for the moment, let's move on from it then, and uh, we can reattack okay. at the end. Right. So now the same thing with goals. What it seems that we've got the shorter version of the list of goals from our discussion previously. So just to be clear, part of what this is trying to do is create a goal for each element of the plan. I mean, that's why some of this text is in sort of red highlighted. Okay. Yeah, make sure you call it out. Good idea. Yeah. All right, let's go through them one at a time. First off, in essence, we've kind of come to a consensus as to what the goal should be, a goal should be. Distill the master plan vision into a set of simple, overarching goals for each of the plan's elements or components. We all agree with that as to what the goal should be? Mm -hmm. right. At this stage, the goals are broad because they must be. Okay. They will continue to evolve and be refined as the process moves forward. Explain that a little bit to us, please. It's an iterative process, okay. developing goals for a master plan. You know, you sort of start out broad because you don't have all the information uh -huh. yet. So then you get the, the existing conditions, you know, issues narrative, and it starts to make you kind of think about, well, you know, what else do we need to say to sort of guide this element of the plan toward, toward where we want to be as a town? So you start out with eight goals. You might, and sort of like there's for one for each element, if you will, and you might end up with two or three for each element. And it's just that as you, as you have more information and you're talking about it more, you start to think of other things that you want to say. This provides a baseline and it's a like iterative a process yeah. for what will be final goals in the written plan. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And you may, you may not add to the goals. You may decide these are good. This is sort of, we got one overarching statement for each one. That's fine. I'm just saying don't That's be the afraid. the process you're using. Yeah, yeah. Are we all happy with that process? Thank you. Okay. Um, ultimately, the goals will help identify potential opportunities and challenges for Littleton and also guide the design of the Master Plans Implementation Program. Yep. I, you know, different words, but that's what you said, I believe. Okay. So with that, we'll take them one at a time. Is that good? All right. So the first one, provide fair, effective, trusted leadership in a local government that has both broad, has both broad legitimacy and the resources needed to manage growth and change. I hate this one. Okay. All right, throw it out. So, Next. for instance, all the other ones, you could have a legitimate argument that to maintain Littleton's small town character. No, I want Littleton to get big. I like bigger towns. I want to live in a bigger town. Mm -hmm. That's a reasonable viewpoint. You might not agree with it, but it's a perfectly reasonable viewpoint. Who's going to argue that we should elect unfair, ineffective, untrusted <laughs> leadership? You would never do that. We're doing the presidency. Do we do all the time? <laughs> we, <laughs> some people think. <laughs> Don't convicted? Go there. Never convicted. Did I say that so, well? you know, I don't think that that uh, it's not worthwhile. To, it doesn't make the town better to say that. How we do it, we can certainly argue about. It. Again, I would say if you want to talk about local governance and you want to have an argument that town meeting doesn't work and we should vote on the ballot so that more people get to say about what we do, how we spend money, or do this or do that. If you think we should uh, organize a town on precincts and vote our, 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 our selectmen in by precinct so that we make sure that a section of town isn't underrepresented or not represented at all, I'll have those discussions all day. But if we're not going to talk about the structure of governance and we're going to talk about, you know, the let's govern as well as we can, of course we're going to try to govern as well as we can. Everybody that's involved is trying to do that. You may argue that they are do it badly and that's why we vote, but I don't like this. Okay. Somebody want to offer an argument against them? 
Lawyers that crystallize the prejudices of the people in power. Huh? That's exactly what government is. If it say it again, please. The crystallized prejudices of the people in power. Okay. Where they're voted from, how they're voted in, what their opinions are once they get in. Like the judge. Had a bad day, you're having a bad day. That's exactly what he said. Well, I know that that was. But <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> I like you. All right, so let's, let's stipulate that for the moment. <laughs> Does anybody want to argue against Mike and Peter? Oh, I agree with them. That's so it. would you rather have this say something like to provide local government with the resources needed to manage growth and change? Yeah, it's only throw the whole bloody thing out. It's it's self it's self evident, isn't it? Not necessarily. Yeah, it, it's one of the well, reasons I asked again, question going back to the about, presidency. It's one of the reasons I asked I asked the question about whether we had some idea at this moment about mm -hmm. the subsequent size of the town. Because there's a difference between being in a small town where we have volunteers, unpaid volunteers who are the elected officials who depend heavily on paid administrative executive staff and a town that has professional. I have to tell you, in my experience over many years in this field, I don't think size has almost anything to do with the type of government that a community needs. I can think of very small towns I've worked with, smaller than yours, that has a government with more department heads and more staff than you have. Uh, I can think of communities that are really big that probably should have considered going to a city form of government a long time ago mm -hmm. and are still trying to run like a small town. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not naming names, I'm just telling you they're out there. So. Okay. You know, so, so I don't think size in, on its own is really a factor. Okay. It only becomes a factor when you're trying to decide, gee, do we want to have a representative town meeting? Because then you have to meet a certain population threshold in order to qualify for that. But uh -huh. If I can offer this so that we move on, mm -hmm. Let's, because no one's offered an argument against Mike up to this point. Yeah. We've talked about things, and I think those are some of the rabbit holes that get into no, I, I disagree with his analysis about the importance of addressing the issue of governance in the town. <clears throat> because oh, it that's is not what I said. That's not what I, I said. I, I understand that. So that's we, not what I said. Okay. Go for the argument. I said the structure of governance, not the actual governors. I I, I, I agree with you. Okay. The structure. That part I agree with. Yeah. But and I'm not saying we shouldn't talk about that. Okay. All right. Well, why don't we reword this to indicate to provide a local government structure that has both broad legitimacy and the resources and promotes the resources needed to manage growth and change. Or to provide local government with the structure and resources required to manage growth and change. Something along those lines, I mean. <clears throat> yeah, I like that last one. So again, provide local to government. provide local government with the with both the structure and resources to manage growth and change. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number two, to maintain Littleton's small town character as the town continues to develop through stewardship of its natural resources and open space, forests, working farms, and lakes. Fine, go to three. Mm -hmm. Everybody okay with it that way? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Number three, to provide a variety of housing that meets the needs of different age groups and is affordable to people of different socioeconomic backgrounds. We're going to change provide to encourage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or however we did it. Yeah. At the very system. least. Yeah. yeah. The rest of it I have no problem with. Everybody okay that way? Mm -hmm. All right. Number four, to develop a local economy that includes a variety of businesses, increases the tax base, provides local jobs, and results in more goods and services available to residents. Sounds good. Yep. Yeah. Uh, develop. Yeah, that's that where has, I've got a problem with that word, too. Yeah. We don't develop the economy. We, yeah, we can't do that. To oh, encourage? Yeah, yeah I, at the very least. You yeah. Foster? Yeah, fine. I was just going to say, Forces. I wonder if we'll get through this whole list without ever seeing the word foster in one of these goals. I'm sorry. That was sort of became in vogue a few years ago. Uh -huh. And there are whole master plans out there where all of the goals talk about fostering stuff. And it's just like. Yeah, I didn't strike a chord there, <laughs> <laughs> I keep thinking of these houses filled with children. Like a magic word. Sorry. Is Foster in or out? Courage. Encourage. Encourage? Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, this year it's I'm so sorry. I've <laughs> <laughs> just, just been doing this encourage. too long. Push for it. 
Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Yeah. Okay. Okay, number five, to improve the safety and ease of getting around town and better connect the pieces of Littleton with safe and pleasant bike and walking paths and public transportation. Yeah. Are we okay? Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. bike and walking paths are something that we do now. Public transportation isn't. How does the town get involved in that? Well, you're easy. You're the right person. <laughs> We, we are quite involved in public transportation. We? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric has a lot of the background. Aside that. from the commuter rail station, the, um, the Lowell Regional Transit Authority has a bus that stops down at IBM just across the border in Littleton. And then also the town a couple years ago joined the Transportation Management Association, Crosstown Connect, as one of the founding members, um, which is sort of a, it's really a public-private partnership. Uh, between the businesses in the town. And then the next steps that the town is working on is connecting the center to the, to the train station. What's the other, besides Lowell Regional, Keith's been working with another regional. Montachusetts. Montachusetts, okay, yeah. Um, in fact, I thought there was a significant breakthrough because they used to stay only in their own region mm -hmm. and now they'll go across lines. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I know Keith, who was involved in helping that happen. Yes, mm -hmm. heavily so, involved. <coughs> so I think All right. from that six. perspective, okay. You okay? Yep. So we okay with number five as is then? Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> okay, number six, to continue to provide excellent town services, schools, and community facilities. Perfect. Seven. Hold on. I'm almost of the mind that uh, starts to fall into... Mike's thoughts on the local government. Well, of course. I mean, would we provide poor town services? Well, it says excellent. Yeah. Some people. This is good. Yeah. Okay. People, yeah, exactly. Some people. Not every really town. Say, I don't want, not every I don't town want can more. say that. This I don't want my tax. I'm happy. Not yeah. to have a service. Right. Just, right. Yeah. Right. Just continue. Oh, you want to put trash pickup in here? <laughs> Curbside pickup. <laughs> there are towns in Western Mass that just don't do it. Just don't do it. Town services could mean a lot of things, PJ. Relax. All right, fair enough. <laughs> Seven, as Peter asked, to promote Littleton's unique history and preserve its variety of historic resources. Um, we don't do a lot of that, do we? Mm -hmm. Should that be historic? And I don't know if we have much, much for cultural resources, but should cultural resources be in there? So cultural and historic well, resources? Well, the cultural resource areas. Cultural resource areas. Yeah. I mean, the words are sort of used interchangeably in a master plan context. Let it stand as it is. What are you concerned that that statement well, like we have the Lyceum, Lyceum and... Right. What are the stuff? I say we don't we don't have a plethora of them. So yeah, but we do have a few. You know, and you've got the church groups do stuff, and for another year or two, maybe we have uh, Indian Hill. Yeah. Why don't we buy that building? Stay tuned. My senior center. Take that up to the planning board. They may be able to help you. you know I actually think when you read the historic resources narrative, you're going to find out that you have a lot here. Yeah. Just no, there is a fact. The, uh, they compile quite a list. Yeah. All right. Um, because I understand what you're saying. You know, we say cultural, and you added areas, so cultural areas and historic resources. Um, well, people sometimes get confused about what cultural includes yeah. in a master plan context, and it really is about physical areas of the town. It's not about right. cultural yeah. establishments or something like As that. As we said, this is iterative. So yeah. Yeah. what we decide this evening is not you know cast yeah. in concrete. Right. All right. To establish and abide by land use policies that are effective at guiding development in the manner consistent with the goals of the master plan in terms of location, appearance, neighborhood, and community impact, and efficiency of delivering town services. Maintain my sustainability um, uh, reputation here. Um, insert sustainable before land use. Oh, so by, uh, by, by sustainable land use policies? Is that what you're recommending? Yes. Okay. That's fine. What does that mean again? Sustainable land use? Land use, land use policies. What does that mean? Okay. Uh, that we're looking, that we take all factors into consideration. We look at the big picture. We take into consideration the impacts on natural resources as well as um, even 
we could be we could be looking at even how we what what building uh, code requirements we have that may support sustainable development. Yeah, well, I mean, it's also about the economy and social structure. Of your I family. understand. Yeah. It's just in this yeah, we limit the types of uses on certain types of land, pot, and land use because it might have a negative impact over the long term and it's no longer sustainable. I don't think like we let them cut firewood down out of the town forest every year, then we have no town forest. Hmm. Are you, are you it's a saying land use policies themselves are not sustainable, so it's to add yeah. to before them now? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not a quite problem. the right placement in the sentence, yeah. but I know exactly. Oh, now you're talking grammar. Oh, that's yeah, a grammar. That's exactly. Gary yeah, yeah. oh, and I, we're over here philosophizing. <laughs> oh, no, no, it was a grammar. It's just that, that I didn't understand what. Give it up. No, I see. <laughs> Are we content with it? If you want it so sustainable before development, that's fine too. Either one. There you go. That makes. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. So sustainable in between guiding and development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, go in sustainable in between guiding and development. Oh, okay. Another alternative. I don't. <coughs> I'm not married to any of them. Well, let's do that. Yeah. Good. I have one more comment. I don't like the numbers. I agree. This is supposed to be a non prioritized list. Yeah. And it, yeah. It, it, just it just pull out. Yeah, get yeah, rid of those. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Sure. I had a similar comment in that while it is numbering or while the numbers go away, the, there is going to be a, an, an implicit thought that there is an order of oh. these. Well, they, yeah. They, and, so, and so simply because I think the order is generally. You could argue with this, but the only I think is not a big deal. It's not as big a deal as, as maintaining the small town character and, and some of the other ones. I just simply would put the government one near the bottom because I don't I, think that I to agree. be the number one that thing too. to be I on want, the list. I don't want to beat the drum one more time. We'll put it on a yeah. Ferris wheel and then yeah. spin it. The way they're going to you're going to see these in that first big deliverable, they're not even going to be in a list like this. They're going to be tied to each element of the plan, oh, okay. each section. Yep. So they're not going to be right. in a list. They that. will ultimately be. And to your point, you know, we should probably think about how people will read the order, even if we're not intending right. an order. But That's for now, I don't right. think you need to worry about it. Okay. Okay. Bullets, though, for now. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now we content on the goals. Yes. I want to entertain a motion. We can make it a combined motion that we adopt for now the shortened version statement with corrections made this evening. Good work. Second. Very good work. And the same with the shorter version list of goals. Second. Okay. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, you know, um, Judy, we're going to talk budget a little bit. I have one question for you. Sure. Um, we have not received the August uh, invoice yet, is that right? No, I don't think so. Okay. I just don't remember. Uh, I, I haven't finished my August invoice. Okay, fair yes, enough. So, yeah. um, so right now, remaining on contract through invoices through July, yep. there are 124 k uh, left to spend. Does that compute some of the How much left? 124 k Oh, yeah. yeah. I've All been right. underbilling this. <laughs> just no, just check with the numbers. And well, you know, I've, I've been sort of very conservative in the way I've been billing this because once the existing conditions document hits you, yeah. that's going to be a large bill. So I've been trying to just that's fair enough. manage this. But yeah, Give us a stick of shock at the end. That's right. Yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, the reason is because we're going to have, I just want to make sure everybody aware of where we stand with numbers in the line. Yeah. It's really the public because it's public money. Sure. Um, so if you're content with that number for the moment, that's good and we'll use that. Yeah. Um, so before moving on and saying you're free to go if you wish. Okay. Um, anybody have any questions of Judy and Eric this evening? So it means the next time we'll see them is when? September 30th. September well, you'll 30th. see me on Saturday. That's great. Thank you. Yes. That's Why would you question? look at me for a question? I mean, you just <laughs> is there anything you guys uh, need from us we're not doing? No, this was fabulous. This was Are you kidding? This was I actually have a question helpful. for you if you don't mind now that you've looked over at me. This last little thing we've gone through, when you, these these questions that one through eight, is this basically something you've produced for another town at some point in time along the same ideas? Well, 
those, no. I mean, you do goals for every master plan. Everybody talks about sustainability. I mean, I'll, I'll pick on this one. Everybody, everybody has a goal about sustainable development and trying to get communities to be clear about what they mean uh, is a real challenge. So that's why I don't like to use that word because... Or foster anymore. Oh, fostering is gone. But I mean, I, I always am very conscious about how the word sustainability gets used because people think it just means saving open space and, um, you know, and just basically doing what you have to do to stop development. So I don't like to use that word. Um, okay, let's go back to my original question. Yes or no? That's all I want. Those are not goals from another plan, if that's your question. No, I mean, the reason why I'm getting at it because a portion of this, you know, obviously we changed a lot of words, a lot of structure. I'm curious to you get this in the, some of the other towns? I wish we did. Really? Yeah. So we're going to improve your structure for the next well, time you go Well, you know, to some towns town? just have a lot of trouble dealing with the wording of goals. Yeah. And and also people have different structures. Like um, like in Groton, the planning board ran that project. And and so they had groups like the, um, like the core assessment groups that we had. And they sort of got involved in helping to craft the goals for that plan. And ultimately it went back through the planning board. Um, in Lincoln, you know, this gigantic committee had their hands on like every word in that document. So it's never the same process exactly. You kind of wish that the committee would just take charge of it and get it done. So I didn't have high hopes coming in here tonight. I'm actually really happy about the way this went. No, it's not a comment about you. It's just the difficulty of writing goal statements. It's just that's hard to write goal statements. So it's, you know, it doesn't always work out this way. Thank you. Anybody else? Nope. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. See you Saturday. Morning. Yeah, see you Saturday. Right. I might not get here till like 10 or How long does this go? Go all day. Yeah, I probably won't get here till about 11. 10, 10 but I'll get here. 10 to 4. 10 to 4. All right, but the bulk of the traffic is about one year earlier. I'm talking earlier. Usually. There's food there too, so. Do you need that for anything else? Are we all, are we no, done? No, all set. That's okay. it. Just want to make sure. Let's go. Okay, no, yeah. budget folks. Um, Marin will send this Thank out to you. all of you. Uh, she put it together for us today. Um, you heard me ask Judy how much remains in the contract. So to back up, the appropriation was $213,612 from town meeting uh, for us to spend through the planning board. Um, of that, it was $150,000 that was on contract. So that leaves obviously about 63 and change. Uh, on the contract, uh, they, we still owe them $124,000 as they deliver. Uh, so everything's paid based on deliverables. So what have we spent up to this point? So through the July invoice that we just talked about, other things that we've done to include postage, uh, park and rec, uh, Thursdays, the logo tournament, t-shirts, training, food services, the uh, public forum, if you will, we spent $43,115.73. That leaves $180,000, but committed realizes that $124,000 to the um, contractor. So what that means for us, remaining outside of the contract, is 56746 And Marin's payroll through about June of 2017 is about another $9,500. So that leaves us right now uncommitted $47,236.27. And as I say, Marin will send a spreadsheet out to all of you so you can see to include the um, town's worksheets. And you'll see right now... We're either thirty thousand, that should be thirty dollars, one way or the other that we gotta reconcile and we'll sort through that. Other than that, the numbers reconcile. So any questions on the budget? Everybody content uh, with our spend plan up to this point? Is there gonna be enough to like deliver the whole master plan and fireworks at the end of this if we if we count our pennies? Well, if we don't have too many fireworks. It's gonna be a big master plan, we probably can't do that. Uh, Skywriter? Yeah. What does the contract call for in terms of uh, production of like a, a documents, a physical production of documents? Is that building? Yeah, I forget the number. Do you remember the number? Is it 12? 20? I don't remember the uh, number now. But the master plan will get um, whatever the number is now of hard copies and then certainly uh, CDs so that uh, we can upload and have electronically. So that's built into the price with, with the yes. Yeah. But just, but just not, not enough for this committee, not necessarily for the general public to have copies of I don't remember the number. It's certainly not 100. Okay. That, that I'm sure of. Um, we'd have to look at the contract. It's just a number escapes me right now. Um, we talked about this early on as far as deliverables and thinking that you know, we're going more uh, 
paperless, understand. sustainable. Understand. <laughs> <laughs> I say that once I have a month, but I like paper. So, uh, you know, both sides. <laughs> so, yeah. there, are people, there are people who will get one. I will get one, yes, but I think that, you know, we want people to read this thing when it's done and want people to and if you like reference it. Cool. Cool. Graph it too. Right, but we would, so we wouldn't. That 50 cents would buy me one. We wouldn't think about producing several thousand. No. No. We, no. But we would make them available in central locations and then certainly the online. Library. Library. It's certainly one of those central yeah. locations. <laughs> Um, the school libraries is another place and then and easy enough if we decide whatever the number is we say no nah, we want more we'll buy more okay. and again I don't have their um, a la carte list in front of me price list um, also put a PDF that's online. Yeah, we'll, we'll, definitely we'll, online for we'll, sure. we'll definitely do that but I think some people just may want actually a, a copy to I know definitely some people in town are going to want to reference this and have copies so okay doke I think tonight was informative and aggressive. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Yeah, you always oh, you're right. motion. One of the reasons I asked to have the <laughs> budget discussion on was um, the implementation piece. After you know, we're most of the way done in May. Um, hopefully, at the May town meeting, we'll also have one or two items to bring to town meeting for um, funding. Um, you know, one of the first couple of goals. First couple of steps to take. Yeah, let's talk with the, and the approach that I'd like is with the selectmen and the planning board, um, because certainly my first blush is each and every commission, committee, whatever board in town has a responsibility to uh, the stewardship of funds. Um, I'd like this committee that when we're done, we're done. So come town meeting, other than a wrap up meeting afterwards, congratulate ourselves for sink and misery, <laughs> whatever's so appropriate, mm -hmm. um, that we're done. Uh, so come? if there's money left over, I'm of the mind to return it to the Treasury and then uh, each of those boards and committees. But let's leave that for discussion. And on the 25th, do we have time to actually talk about that or we want to wait till November? Um, it'll depend on um, Judy's schedule, yeah. how much she has for that agenda. So we have time for that conversation and I want us to have that conversation. Because uh, that's just PJ's thought, you know, so. Right, and I, I would argue yeah. with you on that point. Yeah, and, that, and that's why I, I want it to be open discussion yeah. for everybody to have an opportunity to think about it. Okay, you can make a motion about minutes on July 19th, Peter. Except it is written. Okay, is there a second? Well, this is a second. Okay, all those in favor of approving July 19 minutes? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Peter, you want to do August 29th also? Ditto. Yeah. One correction, I was not in there, Mary. Okay. Second, I second. Okay. So with that correction, um, the members present, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. You want to go home? Aye. Want to make a motion? <laughs> you want to make a motion? Get your name in the paper. Make a motion. Make a motion and we go home. <laughs> the motion made to a second. Or a second. There's a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, folks. Have a great evening, people. See you on uh, Saturday. Please show up, folks.